If you are trying to become an Airbnb host or a short-term rental host of any kind, don't limit yourself to just Airbnb, dude. You got Verbo, and there's many other sites that we utilize. And you want to do so passively. You want to partner with somebody who's already got the systems in place. You don't want to reinvent the wheel. I'm already driving the car, baby. Let's get it going right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise, and I work with you. I work with you one-on-one to help you invest in real estate. And guess what? Guess what? It does not matter to me where you live because it doesn't matter to you where you live, right? This is what's cool about my business, the real estate business in general. You don't have to just limit yourself to investing in real estate where you live. As a matter of fact, where you live is often a negative that draws people to my company because a lot of people live in expensive real estate markets where they can't afford to be rental property investors, to be house flippers, to be wholesalers, right? It's too expensive, right? So they come to me because I put you in investments in the most profitable cash flow markets in the USA that also happen to be some of the cheapest cash flow markets in the USA, right? So we help investors go from just a sideline spectator to an actual full force investor, and we do all the hard on the ground work. And today I'm helping somebody get started in Airbnb. His name is Dan, and Dan, you are not from my market you're from somewhere more expensive and that's okay brother because i got a property that i think is going to be perfect for your first airbnb investment and i will do all the on the ground work for you and what i'm going to do now is take a quick break because I'm, i'm parched honestly i'm thirsty i need to you know get some moisture up in here but but On the other side of that break, you know what we're going to do, Dan? I'm going to break down everything right about the property, everything wrong about the property. I'm going to give you the good, the bad, go over all the money you're going to make, all the money you're going to spend, and give you insight into this particular neighborhood. So you will have the same type of information a local would. Let's go. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back, folks. This is what we're doing, folks. We're pulling up the number, pulling up the pictures, pulling up the money you could or could not make, going over the whole thing, seeing what makes sense, right? Now, just like any business, if you're going to be an Airbnb host, you got to get into the right investment, right? Now, this one, I like this one quite a bit, uh, but it does have some drawbacks, some things I don't like about it, right? The first thing I do like is I like the building. I think the building is super cool. Honestly, most of the time, right, when we're doing Airbnb, we're taking properties and utilizing them for something other than, like, their best use or their most normal use. Honestly, if you think about it, right? The most normal use of a house is typically a house. A family's going to live there, and that's just it, right? But this one is actually, I feel like this was, like, built for airbnb or like verbo or or, you know any of the other ones it's like built for short-term rentals right it's like not in a neighborhood it's like an old uh it's like an old commercial building built in the 50s right and then somebody converted it to a house is essentially what it looks like right and 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 you're not in a neighborhood at all right You're, you're in like i guess what i should say is you're not like in like really like what you would normally consider a residential neighborhood right Like, you're in a little commercial spot here. Like, yes, you got all the houses down the street, right? Like, you go down this way, it's all the street, right? But right here, you're, like, right here on the corner, and then next to you, you have, like, a coffee shop and then, like, you know, some little boutique, like, commercial space, right? And that's, like, 
what's cool about this neighborhood, that's why it works, right? So, like, it doesn't look like a normal house. It actually wasn't originally built as a house. And it's not like you're in, like, a cul-de-sac uh, where kids are just riding around uh, in the middle of the cul-de-sac on their bicycles. No, you're, like, in, like, a city, an urban area, like, a nice trendy spot to do shopping, right? As a matter of fact, it's one of the hottest, uh, like, commercial type districts in Cleveland, right? It's in the neighborhood called Tremont, right? This isn't where a lot of people think, uh, you know, husband, wife, 2.5 kids, dog, white picket fence, right? That's not this, right? This is uh, younger people, a lot of hipsters, right? You hear that term, a lot of hipsters uh, in this type of area going to enjoy the nightlife, the shopping, the thing of that nature, right? So it's like almost perfect for short-term rentals, right? Like it's not it's, it's, it's far from, like, being, like, uh, your typical, uh, like, cul-de-sac neighborhood as possible, right? So uh, I feel like the short-term rentals on this is going to work out good, which, by the way, the address is 2358 West 11th, Cleveland 44113. If anybody out there wants to Google it uh, and, and do more look looking on the Google Earth there, right? So continuing with the pictures. Outside of the fact that I like it, I think it's cool when people are on vacation, they want to be right there, right? They don't need to get a car to go do stuff, right? That's, like, big when you're on vacation. Interior looks cool, man. It's hip. It's new. It's trendy. Like, we'll just need to uh, furnish it, right? Obviously, this is all the stuff from the person who currently lives there, right? It is currently uh, utilized as a single-family residence of somebody who, uh, you know, just lives there, right? It's not currently a short-term rental. So all the furniture you see does not stay. That is their stuff. But, uh, you know, about 25 k we should be able to get this thing furnished, ready to rock and roll. Got a little rooftop deck. Again, perfect uh, for those people. Uh, who are going to be using this on, on a short-term basis, right? As far as what the listing agent had to say, we'll go ahead and check that out. Rare opportunity to own this home in a prime location. Urban living in the heart of Tremont, Lincoln Park, and Civilian's Coffee Shop at your doorstep. Freestanding townhouse offers maintenance-free living with no maintenance fee, which is big, right? If you're going to do short-term rentals, your enemy is going to be HOAs, right? Homeowners associations, right? You know, the Karens driving around the golf carts yelling at you because you painted your mailbox a certain color. Uh, that's never good if you're trying to invest in short-term rentals. Almost every HOA I've dealt with, there's been a few. That there, there's an exception to this. Like I've done, I've worked with, I've had HOAs where they don't have an issue with short-term uh, tenancy, but a lot of them do. I would say the vast majority of them uh, are going to have bylaws that prohibit short-term leasing of your property. Some even go as far as to prohibit any type of leasing. And then, of course, the super radical ones are where you get the Karens driving the golf cart yelling at you about your mailbox color choice. Oh, did you pick taupe? You pick taupe? We're not doing taupe, okay? We're doing blue! I don't even know what color taupe is. Anyway, uh, sleek, sophisticated finishes and upgrades include hardwood floors throughout both levels. Custom designed kitchen featuring solid cherry cabinetry, quartz countertops, GE profile exterior, vented range hood, KitchenAid, digital stovetop and wall oven, fri uh, <laughs> fridge and air gallery, refrigerator, blah, 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 blah. Okay, they're just talking about the stuff. Y'all going to have to just Google this. I don't feel like reading all this. Jeez, where's the stuff where we talked about the upgrades? Let me get through that. All right, poured concrete, integrated sink and counter, skylights in the bedroom and in the open floor plan slash living dining area, offer amazing natural light throughout the space, private outdoor treetop deck off, geez, so many words. Here we go. New high efficiency casement windows 2021. That's where I was trying to get. That's big, right? Especially because this is in Cleveland, right? We got the lead-based paint uh, laws now, the lead-based paint inspections, just because it's short-term rental don't mean you're exempt from that. That's big, right? two biggest places that you have to deal with lead-based paint uh, issues is going to be on your windows if they're old and original. This is not. Okay, you got new windows 2021, and they'll be on the exterior of your house if it's not like vinyl sided, but this one's brick. So you really shouldn't have to deal with that because this house is built in the 50s or building was built in the 50s. So anything before 78 is going to require every two years uh, those lead inspections. But since you got the new windows... And it's brick, probably not going to be a big deal for you, right? New roof, 2017, those kind of roofs, they last like 50, 60, 70 years. Uh, that was probably the first time they replaced the roof, right? So built in 56, 
They replaced it in 2017. That's around 70 or so years, right? New deck, 2021. New furnace and central air, 2017. H2O tank in 2015. That's all good, right? Furnaces last about 30 years. Cost about three grand. Hot water tanks, they last about 15 years. They cost about 1,200 right now, so you're halfway through that. Exterior paint and new garage door and entry doors, 2016. Attached secure parking and extra wide garage with built-in storage cabinet. This home checks all the boxes for design, functionality, and lifestyle, right? So, moral of the story is, I think it's perfect for a short-term rental. I like everything about it. Uh, the one thing I don't like is the price. I think they overpriced it. Like, it's a super hip, trendy neighborhood, but I don't, like, see a lot of people, like, gravitating toward this at the price of 385 right? Because, I mean, if you're starting to get up into the 385 400 450 $500,000 price range uh, in the trendy areas of the city of Cleveland, you could just buy new construction and then you'll get a tax abatement, right? Like, I mean, dude, on some of these new construction properties, when you factor in the 15-year tax abatement, it's like the government giving you a free $150,000. This one does not qualify for that. So I think the price needs to be much lower, right? You don't need to be up in that 400 or so range. So, like, if this was brand new and it looked like this, I think, you know, we'd be looking at, like, well over 400 k and it'd probably sell immediately. Because it's a little older, I think they priced it too high, 385 I don't dig it at 385 I dig it at 340 though. I think 340 is going to be what you need to take this thing down. So 340 would be your purchase price. Your furnishings would run you about 25 k So that's an all-in investment of 365 As far as the rent... Uh, if we rented it every single day at the nightly rent of 275, which is what I believe will be your average nightly rent, you'd make approximately 8,500 a month, right? That'd be 102 G's a year. But folks, you're batshit crazy if you think you're renting a short-term rental every single day. That makes no sense. Historically, we're looking at about 60, 62 percent occupancy. So after you factor in all that vacancy along with cleaning, maintenance, the utilities, property management, because you want to do this totally passive, right? If you're trying to do this totally passive, you're trying to have my team handle everything for you. You don't want to be the person who's got to be like, oh, duh, you lost a Netflix remote? Oh, okay. Did you check under the Did you check under the couch? Not there? All right. Uh, did you check under the love seat? No, it's not there. Oh, okay, well. Oh, you're going to give me a one-star review if I don't give you a new remote because you're trying to watch uh, the latest season of Narco. Oh, yeah. No, I, I get it. No, Narcos. Great show. Okay. Yeah, all right. All right. That, you know what? You don't want to do that, right? My team does that, okay? Let us talk to them about Scoot McNeary. Love Scoot McNeary, man. You guys ever seen that movie Monsters? It's like kind of like a unknown one, dude. That's what turned me. That guy's good. Then he was in Killing Them Softly. You know, I played a really good joke. Great show. Great show. Seen the guy play really good drug cop in Narcos, really good junkie in uh, blah, 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 Killing Them Softly, right, with Brad Pitt. What a handsome man. Anyway, moving on. After all that's said and done, true net operating income average should be about 2400 okay? So that... Hundred two thousand y'all are salivating over it. That's crazy. That's fluff. That's pie in the sky. That ain't reality. But in reality, you make almost thirty k off of this investment. At a three hundred sixty five k total investment, it's about an eight cap. And then of course you want to finance. Financing is the number one reason you should all be investing in real estate, folks. Can't get thirty year loans to buy NFTs. Can't get thirty year loans to buy Bitcoin. Can't get thirty year loans. To sell dream catchers on Etsy with your girlfriend, folks, but you can do it with real estate. So after you factor in your 85k down payment, bank kicks in 243, and then you kick in another 25 for the furnishings, you're looking at approximately 15 and a half percent return on your money. And earlier, as kind of like a negative on this, I mentioned the 15-year tax abatements. Even though that's like at that point you're like, oh, I should pay less because I'm not going to get a tax abatement, but that tax abatement, even though it's not available on this property, makes this property more attractive. Why? Because what is the tax abatement for? The tax abatement is to get people to come in, get developers to come in, tear down old crappy houses, and build fancy new ones that are expensive. They want to tear down old eighty thousand dollar hundred year old homes and build five, six, seven hundred thousand, four, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollar houses in its place. Right. So you get more gentrification, you get more appreciation. So this property today probably worth a lot less than it's going to be in 20 years when you got the city, you got the government giving out all this free money to other developers. So I do think it's a home run, but not at 385 340 is the price I believe we should offer. Let me know if you want me to write up that offer.
Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.